Hello and welcome to the Business Expo Learning Stage. We're excited to have you join us today and want to encourage you to ask any questions you may have. You may do so by using the Q&A button located on the right side of your screen. Uh, during this presentation, you can also chat if asked to by your presenter. So feel free to do that as well. All questions will be answered at the end of the webinar today. And also a friendly reminder that this webinar will be recorded and posted to our Traverse Connect YouTube page within 24 hours. Our first speaker is Heather Hollett, presenting Networking Reimagined, How to Build Professional Relationships in a Meaningful Way. Heather Hollett is a teacher, writer, and coach in the areas of networking, careers, leadership development, and team dynamics. She has a global perspective with a background in education, IT, HR consulting, and volunteer organizations. She has worked across the US, in Canada, and in the UK, spanning companies such as Cisco Systems, MetLife, United Healthcare, BlackBerry, and the Pension Department of the British Government. Heather earned an MBA from the University of California at Berkeley and an MS in Applied Mathematics from Purdue University. Welcome, Heather. Thank you, Jody, and thank you everyone for being here. I'm pretty excited about this event today. I know there's a lot of just total chaos in this pandemic, but what one of the things I'm seeing is we're figuring out how to move our lives online and we have so much to learn. We've had to learn how to just do networking calls or to learn how to teach and we've had to learn how to run meetings and now we're learning how to do an expo and I just find that rather exciting. So stick with us. Thanks for being here today. I'm going to spend 45 minutes talking to you about building professional relationships in a meaningful way. So we are talking about networking and networking is one of those things that just seems to touch different people in different ways. So I want to start off with actually using the chat a little bit. So just head over to the chat for just a minute. And what comes to your mind when I say networking? What does that one, two or three words? Is it glorious? Is it terrifying? Is it just what are a couple of words? And we're going to just see what shows up in the chat. Connections, awesome. Absolutely meeting new people. Good morning, people. Here we go. Well, I can tell you how I feel about networking, at least how I used to. Now, I've really had a transformation in the last 10 10, 15 years, but I used to just be terrified of it. I actually came to networking very late to the game. I was in my mid forties before I even took the whole thing seriously. And, and there's some, there's several reasons for that. At first, at first I just blamed myself. I knew I was bad at it. I had no real driving passion to build a network. And I figured I could make up for it by being smart and by working really hard. And I did. I worked you know, longer, more hours than anyone else, and I produced better work than anyone else. And I thought that would be good enough. Now, I realized kind of in my 40s that I kind of hit the wall on that, but that carried me for the first couple of decades of my career. It's kind of like Popeye. I just am what I am and take it or leave it. But a couple other reasons I was pretty bad at networking, or I, I'm late to this game, I should say, and that is, I fully acknowledge this. I have just, I had a complete lack of social skills. Now networking skills are just a subset of social skills and social skills are learned and I never learned them. I, you know, I grew up in the country. My parents were simple blue collar people. My dad was a bricklayer who didn't finish high school. My mom was a nurse's assistant. Uh, my, my elementary school, which went all the way up to grade eight to eight grades, I grew up in Canada had 200 kids. I mean, just there wasn't actually a lot of interaction. The neighborhood that I lived in, such as it was, because we lived on about six acres, the neighborhood had one other kid my age, and he was kind of a goofball. So I just never really acquired social skills. I just somehow managed to limp through 
uh, and I, you know, I still think they're kind of overrated. We judge people by the way they present on the veneer on the surface. In fact, oftentimes there's a really interesting deep person underneath and we oftentimes dismiss the book based on the cover. So in any case, I knew I was bad at it and I had not taken the time to learn the social skills that in fact were at, in this case, just building professional networks. And the last case, and I go a lot into this in my book, and we're not going to have time to cover this today, but I have a very strong preference for introversion. I know that my mom has a strong preference for introversion. I grew up in the country. I spend way more time just walking in the woods and playing down by the river than I ever did interacting with people. And that was fine with me. If you gave me the choice of going out with a group of people on a Friday night or staying home with a good book, I'd take the good book. In fact, I'd take that deal if it was a bad book. But I just, it was just, I, that's, I don't need a lot of social interaction to feel enriched. Most of my life is, is busy, like five trains of thought running at any given time in my head. So I just knew that and figured therefore that somehow precluded me from going into, you know, being any kind of networking guru or building any kind of professional relationships on any kind of scale. So that's kind of my story and my excuses. And in my forties, I was working at Cisco in Silicon Valley and the economy kind of hit the skids and my career kind of hit the skids. And I went back to school because that's what you do when your career hits the skids, right? And I had this epiphany. I had this eye-opening experience. I was actually at Berkeley doing an MBA and everyone just kept talking about this networking thing. And I'm like, oh, of course, of course, that's it. That's the part I was missing. And now here I am waking up to this missing piece of my life. And here I am with all these amazing fellow colleagues in this amazing new alumni network that I'm part of. And I dove in and I started going to networking events and every bar of the week and pub of the month and networking on the quadrangle. And, I'd, and it only took me about three months. And I actually remember the moment. I was standing in a bar of the week, this incredibly noisy bar. It was about 1030 on a Friday night and the volume levels. And I know you can, re some of you can relate to this. It was so loud that I couldn't even hear myself think, let alone what this person two feet away from me was trying to say. And I just kind of thought, wait a minute, I'm like, is this it? And that way I, I kind of endured the rest of that evening and I'm driving home and I thought, you know what? This just, I, I know, I know the networking thing is right. I know that, but man, this can't be it. And I spent the next three or four years trying to figure this out. And I graduated from school. I actually went to London for a couple of years. And that was kind of that immersion in a whole foreign culture was just kind of forced, forced learning stuff that I wanted and needed to learn anyway. But in any case, probably over the next three years, I came to the conclusion that networking, the way we think of it now, the way it's been kind of portray portrayed and encouraged in our overall culture, and this is particularly in America, I will say, um, networking is broken. And I think it's broken in three really kind of critical ways. And the first is probably the most obvious. Networking is broken because we've somehow come to equate it with attending events. Right. When I say you know, someone realizes, you know, I need to kind of up my networking game or I want to build my network. The first thing you think of is I got to find an event. I got to go somewhere. Right. And every professional organization has regularly networking events and conferences have networking events. And we've somehow got this equation, this 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 matching of, well, networking equals going to events. You may recall, I mentioned I have a strong preference for introversion. So that always was really a tough one for me right out of the gate, right? How the heck am I going to be good at this when all it means is that I have to go to events? And I think we've come to the event, we've come to the connection with events because we've somehow made the, made the connection in our heads that networking is about meeting new people. Right. If I need to network, I need to new people. And so we go to an event and we're, there's tons of new people there. So it's just a garden to pick and we, there's so many people. Right. And that also seems rather odd to me. And so we're going to unpack that today and we're going to untangle that and show, in fact, what it really is. Sure, it's important to add new people to your network, but you've got a rich, rich web of people already in your network. And that needs nurturing and development and care and feeding as well. And that, in fact, is the bulk of what networking is. So this meeting new people thing is rather a diversion. It's rather a smokescreen. Yes, you need to add new people, but you also have a lot of people in your network that you need to build relationships with. 
And the last thing that I really, really feel like networking is broken is there's this kind of underlying sense, not with everyone, not even maybe a majority, but it's definitely out there. There's this sense that networking is about getting something, right? It's about, even when you're out to meet new people, oftentimes the first thing we evaluate as we're getting to know a person standing at a networking event with a drink in our hand and a business card and the other, you know, what, it, what could this person do for me, right? Who is this person and how could they help me? Now, a lot of times we're not so blatant as that. And there's some people, I call it pseudo networking, they kind of claim to try to be above all that. So they'll, they'll say, well, no, you have to give something first before you get some, before you can get something back. And I argue that quid pro quo approach is just, just as bad. It's just kind of dressed up in a nice facade, in a nice facade, but it's just as bad, right? That networking is not about getting something. In fact, I call that net groveling. And this is really tricky because especially for people who are expanding their careers and looking to grow their businesses and looking for a job, if you're job searching, you absolutely need to network to get a job, right? If you're looking for an opportunity or looking for a person is rule number one for job search. However, you can't go out there with your resume pinned to your cuff of your sleeve and say, can you help me? Do you have a job for me? That's not how it works. It needs to be way more nuanced than that. You need to embrace the world with a spirit of helpfulness. And if you connect and as you connect with the right people, you will find people who reciprocate and they will reciprocate with the value that you can bring and the value that your network brings. And ideally, if you're, especially if you're job searching or growing your business, people who will exchange some of that value in terms of paying you or buying your products. Make sense? So it's not about getting something, it's about giving something. So let me put this in a nutshell and then we're gonna deconstruct this. So networking in a nutshell then is not about events, it's not about new people, and it's definitely not about getting something. I have kind of boiled it all down to networking is about sharing who and what you know to help other people be successful. You know people. You have a very rich network. You know lots of people, and those people represent this incredible wealth of knowledge and an incredible wealth of connections to other people. So you know people, and you know stuff. You've been around the block. You've done stuff. You have things. You're curious. You know things. So networking is about embracing a world with a spirit of this kind of helpfulness. How can I help you? What do you What do you What do you do? What are you working on? What is it that we might be able? And you know, I don't. You know, someone was I to someone yesterday. Well, you know, ninety percent of the time I can't think of anything. Yeah, that's all right. It's the spirit that matters. I may meet the person I need to introduce you to next week, next month. I may stumble across the article or the inf information that would really help you a, month, a week from now. That's fine. It's the mindset. It's the, it's the, do I know somebody? Help me understand what you're doing. Or maybe I just don't know enough about you. That's most likely the case. Maybe I just don't know all the various things you're working on and you're struggling with and you're challenged and you're trying to get progress on. And if I knew more of those, I might be able to think of someone or something to share with you. So I think that's kind of un un breaks what networking is. You have to embrace the world with a spirit of helpfulness. And it kind of starts with who and, and sharing who and what you know to help other people. Now that's the what, and that is easy to say. And I could just send you off with that. You'd be like, oh, that's great. But there's way more to it than that. It's a way more nuanced than that. So I'm gonna spend the next 25 minutes adding some how. How do we do this? How do we actually think about it? How do we engage in a practical, meaningful, efficient way to share who and what we know with people, to really get to know people, to understand what they're doing and struggling with and working on in a way that my life and my network and my knowledge intersects with theirs? Because that's really what we're up against. We are a deeply interconnected species and leaning into that interconnectedness is what this is all about. So let me tell you how to do that now. We kind of have a general sense of the what. Let me tell you the how. When I was going through school and I had this epiphany and I realized that networking is broken, I launched on a quest. And I have called it a quest because that's what it was. I was hell bent on figuring this thing out. Look, what is this networking thing? I'm going to figure it out. I know what it isn't. I know it isn't noisy bars. I know it isn't groveling trying to get something. I know it isn't this endless stream, you know, the, the gratuitous exchange of business cards trying to meet new people. But what is it then? What the heck is it? And I bet you a dollar you haven't really thought about that either. 
And this is where we want to kind of start today, right? In order to kind of reimagine and reinvent and, and supercharge my networking, I kind of have a, I have to clarify what the heck I even mean by that. I wrestled with this, I bet you, for three years. I read books. I watched what other people did. I would go to events. I, for, there was a period where I just went, I put myself in observer mode. And I just went and I just watched. I really didn't have any goals of meeting people. I didn't, I remember, I'm introverts. So I wasn't too worried about getting out to the middle of the room. I just kind of watched and seen what happened. And as I came through this, I realized that the reason we don't know what is networking is, well, let me put it this way. I, I have a, a degree in mathematics. And in math, every time we, in a lot of the sciences actually, every time we have what, what's called an intractable problem, something that just seems intractable, that can't be solved, the way you tackle that is you're like, okay, well, maybe I can break this down into some simpler problems. And if I can solve those simpler pieces, I hope if I'm lucky, I can knit it back together and then answer my bigger intractable problem. And I do that with a lot of my work actually. And it's, it's especially helpful here when we're talking about networking. So I found this intractable. Nobody seems to know what it is. We're all running around trying to do it, knowing it's important, genuinely trying to do it in a meaningful way and being kind of lost at it. And so I realized that before I could answer what is networking, I had to answer a more fundamental question. And I had this written on a whiteboard. And if you look at this, the screen right now, you're looking at what I was looking at. And one day it hit me that embedded in this question, what is networking, is actually a more fundamental question. We have to ask ourselves, what is a network? What is a network? Because once I get my head around that, then I can figure out what the networking thing is. And I bet you, you've never thought about that. If I asked you, what is your network? What is the network? What is your network? Nine times out of 10, I'm gonna, people are gonna say, well, it's my, it's the people in my address book. It's my LinkedIn connections. It's my Facebook friends. It's, it's some list, right? It's some, it's some set of names. It's the business cards in my top drawer. And I, I actually asked this at Berkeley once um, early on when I was developing this material and well-intended and somewhat true, the person said, well, my network is everyone I've ever met and everyone I ever will. I'm like, oh, it's nice, <laughs> it's good, but what the hell do I do with everyone I ever met and everyone I ever will? I, I need this notion of networking and a network to be something I can work with, something chewy, something that I have substance to it. And that was just too amorphous. It was too abstract. It may be correct who's to just define what's correct and what's not, but it wasn't very helpful. So I wanted a definition of a network. I'm getting really fundamental here, but it's kind of, it's not kind of important. It's absolutely essential for us to build back up into what is networking and how do I do this in a substantial and meaningful way. So it's not people, it's not lists of names, it's not LinkedIn connects, it's not Facebook friends. What is it then? And I realized one day I'm thinking about this and I realized I'm also thinking about this wrong because I'm thinking about it as people. If there's any engineers in the group or mathematicians, I was thinking about it as the nodes, right? As the endpoints of all the connections. In fact, what makes up a network is not the people, it's not the nodes, it's the space between you. Think about that for a second, right? If you take a look at those names in your address book, in between you and every one of those names is a connection, is a relationship our links and those connections. And this is, be with me here now. If you only have five minutes of brain energy, be with me here now. Those connections have a couple of really magical properties. Every, they have dozens, I'm sure, but two that are relevant to us in terms of thinking about this networking question. The first one is every connection, every relationship, every link between you and another person has a degree of freshness. How fresh is that connection, right? How, if you met someone this morning, if you saw them yesterday, after whatever, that is a fairly fresh connection. But that freshness fades fairly quickly, right? So all of these connections, so 100,000, whatever number of people in your address book, every one of those connections has a different degree of freshness at this moment. And if you're a visual person, I, this works for me really well. I think of that freshness as how bright that connection is. And I can start to close my eyes and literally visualize my network now. 
I can see and I can see the various levels of brightness and people I talked to yesterday, th those are brighter. And so there's this sense of freshness, right? You buy it, you with me? And the other magical property that really makes this, kind of holds this together is every single one of those connections has a degree of strength. How strong is that connection? Right, so people I went to school with, I, it may not even be fresh. It might be someone I haven't seen in 20 years, but we are tight. And if I called them and said, I need a favor, I need help, or they called me, without a doubt, the connection is strong. So now I have, and, and if you're visual, again, you can think about the strength of that connection as how thick it is. And now we have a literal visual, we have visualization of what our network is. So this, this, this quest to actually answer the question, what is a network wasn't that hard, right? There is a way to visualize this thing. And in fact, I want you to just take a moment on that. Oh wait, let's, so, so let, me, let me give some, uh, oh, here I am, sorry about that. I just added this slide yesterday. So to, to knit this all together, what is a network then? A network is the totality of all the connections between you and everyone you know, qualified, as defined by the freshness and strength of each of those connections. All right, now we've got something. What is a network? It's the totality of all those connections. So now you can look through that address book. Don't think of that as a person though. Every time you, you read across a name, think about it, think about the connection. What is the freshness of that connection? How fresh is it? Do I wish it were fresher? How strong is it? Do I wish it were stronger? That's actually a very important exercise in building and maintaining professional relationships. So let's just do this just for a second. Our time is flying by, but I want you to, I call this the network analysis exercise. And just for 15 seconds, I want you to think about three people where the, where the connection between you is very fresh. You may have seen them yesterday, last night. The three names, top of mind, connection is very fresh. And three names quickly come to mind where the connections are strong. This is your tribe. These are your peeps. These are your people. Congratulations, you're networking, right? No beer, no noisy bar, but that exercise in and of itself is part of networking. And it, it, in the book and in the workbook that goes with it, there's a, actually a more in-depth exercise here. And I do this every six months. I go through my LinkedIn connections one by one and I ask myself, how fresh is this connection? Do I wish it were fresher? How strong is this connection? Do I wish it were stronger? Do I need to make any investments right now? What are they working on? Where are they in life? And I just refresh that. I actually think LinkedIn serves an important role in that way. I don't have time every six months to reach out. I have over a thousand connections now to reach out to every single person and set up a call or meet for coffee. But I at least do that. And 5% of those probably every six months, I actually act on that. I'll send them an email. In some cases, I'll set up a call and I'll freshen it, right? So that's, that's kind of thinking about your network in the right way. And you can already see where I'm going with this, right? Because now I have a definition of a network that is drawing me into action. It's actually a useful definition, right? A network is the totality of all the connections. It's defined by the freshness and strength. And that leads us directly into now we can tackle the original question that was intractable when I started. And now I think we can answer it. In fact, if you're with me, if you've been following along, um, everything I've said so far, you already know the answer, right? Because if a network is this connections that are based on freshness and strength, then what is networking? That's right. Networking is anything that freshens or strengthens a connection. And let me add some clarifications and emphasis and qualifiers here. Networking is anything that freshens or strengthens a connection for you. And that's really important. I go a lot of this in the book because I have a strong preference for introversion. And that means that freshening and strengthening connections for me looks very different than my friends and the people in the world who have a strong preference for extroversion. They will go about that process and that freshening and strengthening in a very different way. And you should. So anything that freshens and strengthens a connection for you is networking, and anything that does not freshen or strengthen a connection for you is not networking for you. Permission to stop doing it. I don't go to noisy bars anymore with the expectation of uh, building relationships. I sometimes go, the beer's good, 
but I don't go with the delusion that I am going to build any kind of strength or any kind of relationships there. It's just not a, the cortisol. If I go with that intent, the cortisol levels in my veins just go through the roof. So for me, that is not an activity that freshens or strengthens. For you, and this is kind of your charge for the rest of the day and rest of your life, really dig into that. How do I build relationships with people? Of course, building a relationship is a two-sided affair. So it also matters how they go. So if you're an extrovert, but you're actually connecting with an introvert, that's going to look a little different than two extroverts connecting, et cetera, et cetera, right? So this is really a nuanced human kind of exciting way to engage the world. Now, just to be a complete here. I will argue that sometimes it is important to add new people to your network. It's kind of, there's, I, as I go through my LinkedIn connections, by the way, one of the things I'm doing is kind of archiving. There are people who have kind of faded off for now. I can't keep every, every person I've ever met is not in my active network right now. So I have to kind of call that as well. So there, there is this kind of gentle adding and calling as well. So let me just complete the definition then. Anything that creates, freshens or strengthens a connection for you is networking. And anything that doesn't do those three things for you is not. Permission to stop doing them, but expectation that you will double down on the areas where you're good at. Introvert, loves email, loves to send messages, do that all day long, build relationships. Extroverts, get out there, schedule lunch. Well, when COVID's done. Anyway, you follow my drift, right? Let me just spend a few seconds on each of these to add a little more color. And then we'll get into kind of, we really want to focus on the strengthened one because that's, that's where the real gold is in this building relationships. In terms of creating relationship or creating network connections, we tend to put most of our, uh, most of our chips on serendipity here. We think that going to events is a great way to create connections because we'll meet new people. And we're just, we kind of do the serendipity game here. That's okay. I've met lots of people and had lots of people cross, come into my network that way, but that's not the entire game. I, I say about 50% of your network should have come that way, but the, another 40% needs to be deliberate. You need to be on the lookout for people. You need to be pursuing people. There are people I want in my network and that depends on who you are, where you are in your life, what are you trying to accomplish, what do you need? You just kind of look at the world. Sometimes you'll reach out to a friend and say, "I see, this is why I love LinkedIn. You're connected to so-and-so. I'd love to just, would you mind introducing me? I'd love to get to, um, whatever, right? There is a deliberateness to it. If it's business-related, career-related, profession-related, interest-related, be deliberate about it. There is a sense of deliberateness to it. And then the last 10% is, maybe 10% is a little high. The last 10% is aspirational. I have an aspirational list. There are people who I'd love to have in my network. And part of what makes them aspirational is when I'm ready. There's this kind of sense of, you know, Beyonce is an, an aspirational contact for me, but Susan Cain is. I've now published a book and she's published a book, but she's sold many more copies than I have. And I would love to sit down and have coffee with her someday now. And so she's on my aspirational list, right? Point being kind of when I'm ready to meet you, that's what makes it aspirational. That keeps pulling me forward in my career and in my life. So there is this sense of I have an aspirational list as well. So don't leave all of the new connections to just serendipity. It's too random and, and you, it's too great to actually go in pursuit of just, it's, it's more of a radar thing. It's just like, who, who do I want in my network? And, and when those names come across your transom, you're like, oh, that's somebody I'd like to get to know. So make it happen. All right. How do you freshen connections? I'm going to leave that to you, right? Introvert, extrovert, circumstances, COVID, whatever, but make the investment, right? It's not necessarily getting together for a coffee or lunch. Email works putting a comment on their on their LinkedIn, or at the very least, I actually consider social media freshening connection. It's very passive, it's one-sided, but it's not zero, right? The people I follow on Twitter, the people I follow on LinkedIn, that's actually them freshening my con the connection. Very passive, but non-zero. So whatever works for you, invest in that. And then, you know, some small percentage of that is, is really heavily invested. Let's do a call. Here's an email. Here's what I'm up to. What are you up to? You get the more, right? The real, the real value here is how do I strengthen connections? And for that, we're gonna to go to the social scientists because they actually know how to do this. 
And I'll admit that I got this idea from Keith Ferrazzi. He wrote a book called Never Eat Alone. And it's a brilliant book on networking. I read this early on in my quest and my research to make sense of this. It's 31 chapters. They're all relatively short. I had just come back to the US from the UK and I used it as kind of a devotional. Every morning I would read a little bit of this and then kind of launch back into job search. And there's some incredible ideas in that book. And, and I wouldn't have written mine, and I I've actually would have stopped, except Keith Ferrazzi is as opposite to me as could possibly be on the introvert-extrovert spectrum. He's so extroverted. So I kind of had to rethink it from an introvert's perspective. And that's a lot of what my work has been, is just how do I rethink this based on... So, so he's the one who gave me this idea, how do we strengthen connections? And he says that it's really pretty straightforward. We know how to do this that the way you strengthen a connection, and it's a tight phrase here, stick with me, right? The way you strengthen connections is the constant exchange of favors and information. That strengthening between people happens through the constant exchange of favors. I'll do a favor for you, you do a favor for me. That favor doesn't have to be extravagant, it could be an introduction. It could be passing along, oh, passing along from information. So the constant exchange of favors and information. I could come up, come by and help you move. I could introduce you to somebody that'll help you move your career forward. The constant exchange of favors and information. And I wanna unpack this now for the rest of the next 10 minutes we have. Is this is the part where the gold happens. This is the part where you're really nurturing relationships. You know, some you're, you're busy freshening and that's probably 80% of the people you relate to, you just kind of freshen it. And there will be people where you say, I really would like this relationship to be stronger. There's a case for that. There's a desire for that. It seems mutual. How do we do that? Then you have to think about how do I strengthen this? What favor could I do for this person? What information might I share? You're already seeing this linking back to the original theme, right? Because this is where it comes down to. If you think about how most people think about networking, they don't think about it, about strengthening, right? Two people, let's go to an event. Let's imagine we're at an event. Two people kind of bump up against each other in the middle of the room. What's going through their heads typically? Typically, it's, it is. What can I do? What can you do for me? Who is this person? What can you do for me? What, you know, I, I actually was networking once and I introduced myself and this person was a hedge fund manager and he immediately decided I was of no value to him. And he stopped, I was mid-sentence and he turned and walked away. I, he was just trying to decide if I was any value to him. Any case, long story. So what we wanna do instead is I wanna switch that from what can you do for me to what can I do for you? Now that is non-trivial, that is not easy, right? Because I don't know what I can do for you. I don't know you very well yet. So I've got to find a way to burrow into that. And I may not think of anything today, 90, 95% of the time I don't think of anything, but that doesn't mean that I'm not trying to. That doesn't mean I haven't engaged you with that spirit, right? So I'm trying to think about, and here's what I do. So when I'm in a networking situation or in the mindset of trying to nurture and strengthen a relationship, I run these two questions through my brain on an endless loop. I'm talking, I'm asking questions, I'm listening, I'm getting to know you. And while we're doing that, I'm asking myself, who do I know? And what do I know that might be helpful here? Who do I know? And what do I know that might be helpful here? Right, and that's the goal that just as you're conversing. And so we wanna have conversations and as we're doing that. So, and again, this kind of conversation is very different than just two friends catching up right after a long time. I don't do that with every, you know, sit down, come, come home at the end of the day with my spouse. Who do I know? What do I know that could help you? But when I'm thinking about networking, especially in a professional sense, I am engaging with people. And if I have the sense that this is one I'd like to strengthen, if I can find a link here, if I can find a favor I could offer or find some information. And the research here shows, by the way, and this is, you know, use this selectively, but asking for a favor actually is even more strengthening. There's something magic about you ask a person for a favor and they do it. And that really endears people to one another. So who do I know? What do I know that could help you be successful? So that's what networking is. Now we know what a network is. It's the totality of all these connections based on fresh, freshness and strength. And networking is creating freshening and strengthening links. Very different than when we started. I guarantee that. I, you, you didn't, when we started at the beginning, what is networking? This was not an obvious endpoint, but that's what it is. Anything, and, and for you, anything that creates freshness or strengthens a link for you, that's, that's what networking is. 
I want to just go one more dive into this strengthening piece because that part about how do I get a con I'm I'm trying to ask myself who do I know what do I know that could help you the key here then is I need to I need to get the conversation beyond small talk if I had more time I'd do a delightful soliloquy on small talk because it actually turns out to be pretty important and pretty awesome but we got to get past it so how do I quickly get past the small talk and we're done with the weather and we're done with the the bears and we're done with whatever, how do I get to the point where I can start saying, who do I know and what do I know that could help you be successful? Now, let me just tell you, there's a couple things that don't work. So let's wipe these off of our repertoire, right? The first thing that doesn't work, and I've had people do this and I've really, whatever. The first thing that doesn't work is someone says, how can I help you? Anything, name it. That is actually just lazy, right? I don't know who you know, I don't know what you know. That's like walking into the doctor and the doctor saying, well, what do you need? What do you want? I don't know, you're the doctor. Let me tell you where my pain is or let me tell you what I'm experiencing. You tell me what I need, right? So that is actually, I, I consider that rather lazy. It's somewhat of a facade. People put on this facade of helpfulness, but then they're not trying to be very helpful. It needs to be a way to get it from the other side, right? That I don't know who you know. I don't know what you know. So that's not very helpful. And then the what do you do question, this is one of my favorites. I actually talk about this as being like the world's worst networking question. It's probably, it's probably not, but it's well-intended, right? We can't help ourselves. We kind of want to know what people do, but here's the problem with it. What you do is, what do I do with that? So you're a doctor, so you're a project manager, so you're a sales manager. I'm asking myself, who do I know or what do I know that could help you? I got nothing to work with on that. So I need a better question, right? When I'm having a conversation and I really want to get to know someone in a meaningful way that might really strengthen this relationship, I have a very specific question that, I, that burrows right through the noise and gets us into connection and meaningful conversation in a way that's rather remarkable. So I, and, and I stumbled across this years ago, and I still believe that's a five, six, oh God, it's 10 years later now. I still think it's one of the most amazing questions in the world. So if you take nothing else away today, take away this phrase as your opening volley in any kind of networking conversation. Instead of what do you do or how can I help me or what's going on or what's up, here's the question you want to ask. What are you working on? What are you working on? And I love that question. It is delightfully ambiguous because depending on how well you know this person, where you are, where they're at in life, they may go really light. I like to say there's four kind of big buckets that people might answer from. Kind of what are you working on at home, right? I'm trying to get ready for winter. I'm trying to find a, somebody to sharpen the blades on my lawnmower, whatever, right? What are you working on at home? If you ask this question among colleagues at work, they're probably gonna tell you what they're working on at work. That's good, that's actually important to know. The whole fourth section of my book is all about networking at work. You absolutely wanna network at work. Why wouldn't you wanna have fresh and strength connections with a spirit of helpfulness? It's actually the definition of collaboration. So people might talk at work. I do career coaching and leadership coaching. So people often talk to me about what they're working on in their career. And I, it's great because I can help there. So what are you working on in your career? You should always be working on something. What's 18 months from now? Where do you want to be? What do you want to be? How, where do you want to be professionally as a leader, as a, as a whatever, right? And lastly, and again, this depends how well you know the person. What are you working on in life? I'm trying to be more meditative. I'm trying to be more mindful trying to eat better, trying to whatever, right? And those things, when we start talking about those, I can find a way to be helpful. I can actually answer who do I know and what do I know that could help you be successful? So that is the magic question. Who do I know? What do I know in the context of what you're working on? If I ask you, what do you do? I can't work with that, right? But if I ask you what you're working on, and I can tell you, I've been in networking situations and I've been so tempted to go with the classic, what do you do? And I'm like, no, Heather, you, you, this is your thing. And you ask what they're working on and they light right up. And they just, and it could be anything. It's just their work, people are working on stuff. Life's hard, <laughs> we're working on stuff. I just think it's the most wonderful thing. Now, lest you think that I'm advocating we all be doormats, know this, that as you embrace the world in this way with a spirit of helpfulness, you will begin to attract people who think the same way. 
And they are gonna ask you, what are you working on? And you need to be ready to answer this. And this is where the magic of relationships work, right? The people who are groveling, the people who are out to get something, they will kind of fade away. They don't come into your network anymore. You will recognize those people right away and you will just not bother. But for the people who share this spirit of helpfulness, who want to help, it's important that you're ready, right? So we talk about having an elevator pitch or how you're going to introduce yourself. This is how you prepare, right? Be ready to answer. What are you working on at home, at work, in your career, in life? It's contextual. If I'm going to a group meeting with some tech people, the answer to what I'm working on might be very different if I'm going to a meeting of coaches or if I'm going to a meeting of environmentalists. I built a compost bin yesterday. I'm working on WooCommerce on my website. You get the point, right? So I'm working on lots of stuff. And so some of that is contextual, but be ready to answer that. Be prepared to be asked that question. When I'm getting ready to meet someone or, or used to be driving to an event, the way over in the car, now I just block a half hour before, I actually think about this. A, what, I, what do I think they might be working on? And then me, when they ask, because they will ask, they will ask. And I'll talk about that in a minute. They don't always word it that way, but they will ask. Be prepared to answer. Help them help you. I've asked people before, what do you work on? They're like, nah, I don't know. I'm like, well, good luck then. I, I, I Give me something to work with and I'll see if I can be helpful. So this is a sense of assume good intentions, assume people want to be helpful, and then help them help you. And finally, avoid or beware of alternate endings. This is the one that is so funny. Not everyone has been to the Heather Hollick School of Networking. So not everyone will actually phrase the question, what are you working on? Notice tongue in cheek here. They may say, Heather, what do you do? And I'll say, you know, I'm a coach, or I'm a teacher, or I'm a speaker, or writer, whatever, and I'm working on, and I go right into that. So if they don't lead with the lean in question, I will follow with the lean in question. And you know what? It works. It works. There's just something the human spirit wants to be helpful. I actually have some research in chapter one of the book about it's it's inborn to us. We actually have it socialized out of us to be helpful. It's just natural. So when you start sharing what you're working on, they lean in. Oh, that's interesting. You know what? I know they can't help themselves. So they will ask you. They may say, hey, what's up? They may say, what do you do? Assume that they're asking you, they want to know what you're working on, and the magic happens. I swear to you, the magic happens. All right, we have three minutes left, two minutes left, because I need to hand it back to Jody. Here's the nutshell. Here's the summary. Networking mindset is about creating, freshening, and strengthening connections. It's about embracing the world with a spirit of helpfulness. It's about sharing who and what you know. It's about doing it your way. So if there's any questions or comments in the chat, please put them in. I am going to leave this up on the screen while we look at the chat. So there are some resources. I have copies of my, my website's full of stuff that's free. So take a look there if you'd like, heatherholic.com. There's a lot of articles, a lot of this stuff, the, the book actually grew out of a lot of posts. So there's a lot of the stuff on blog posts. Of course, I have a book, hardcover, paperback, EPUBs. There's a workbook that goes with the book. And of course, you can get it anywhere books are sold. So Amazon, any bookstore, um, it's, and it's available in all the Kindles for all the electronic versions, Kobo, Apple Books, et cetera. So um, help yourself. And Jody, I'm going to hand it back to you if there are any questions. And it looks like we have, we'll do a few questions and then you shut us down when we're done. Sure. Thanks, Heather. That was tremendous. Such great information. Um, so can you read the tale of your book again for me? It is called Helpful, A Guide to Life, Careers, and the Art of Networking. Great. It is not the most SEO <laughs> compatible <laughs> title, but it's the <laughs> essence of the book because this spirit of helpfulness is how we should embrace life. I actually believe, and it might be my next or the, the next next book, this spirit of helpfulness is part of what we need in our culture right now. So it's a guide to life, careers, and the art of networking. Because I just, I just think we've missed this basic mindset of how to connect with one another and how to engage with one another. And then there's an accompanying workbook. The exercises are all in the book, but the workbook kind of gives you space to work on them as well. So um, that's great. Yeah, a guide yeah, to I life, careers, and one of my favorite takeaways I think from today was the embrace the world with a spirit of helpfulness. That's just such a great starting place for everyone. Um, I think, I just think that sums it up. So that's great. Um, 
Do I see any other questions? If anyone has questions, you can put them in the chat. The Q&A for some reason is, um, I don't know that that's functioning right now. So if you have a question, you can just put it into chat. Um, I guess one of my questions would be, what was your very first step that you took as an introvert? Like, what do you see looking back as the first step you took to start this active networking? It was giving myself permission to stop equating it with events. Events are so traumatic for me. These bars and pubs and they're just, they're just stress levels off the charts. When I gave myself permission to stop doing that and thinking about this in terms of relationships that actually further the relationship, that was the turning point. I give, giving myself permission to stop what wasn't working because I had tried it the old ways and I tried to do what the extroverts were doing. And it turns out they weren't actually networking. They yeah. thought they were because they thought, you know, I like to talk to people, but, but interrupting someone on an airplane sitting next to you is not networking, right? Chatting up the person in the grocery line is not networking. So that permission to stop doing that was, was the turning point for me. And then I started to look at what is it for me? And it kind of just blossomed. That's terrific. Okay, well, I don't see that we have uh, any other questions. So uh, thank you, Heather, again, for joining mm, us today pleasure. and for sharing this valuable information. It was just great. We greatly appreciate your time. And we hope that all of you attending enjoyed the learning stage and encourage you to check our future learning stage webinars. Um, they're almost back to back today. So um, pop in all day long, tell your friends uh, to join as attendees today. It's gonna be a great day at the expo as well. Uh, so we'll have the virtual expo of course is going on all day today as well. Thank you for attending, stay safe, stay healthy, and we hope to see you at our next webinar. Have a great day.